to the Oaki Show, and today we are talking about the big news that Austin Matthews has re well, signed an extension with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and it is now the biggest contract at this point. I'm sure it's going to be overshadowed by whoever the next big, big superstar that needs a resign is going to be, but for now it stands that Austin Matthews next season will be making the most money in a season with 13.25 for four years. And this, I'm not surprised. I didn't really think he was going to walk at this point with the Maple Leafs. He's, well, I'll go into it in a second, but I feel like with what he's done so far in Toronto, he has no reason really to leave yet at this point and for only four more years like he's still gonna have plenty of career afterwards from him right and I definitely 100% think that that is gonna be the time he leaves and four years from now he will be in like the coming to the end of his prime of his career and that's when he's gonna really cash in especially since with goal scoring going up in the league and his just whatever his resume is gonna look like by then at that point in four years he's gonna be be able to make way more money than in the cap going up and up and up and just like the next big player whoever that is I can't think of one right now but let's say whenever Nick Mick David whenever his contract comes up like he will be making what like 16 million dollars so at that point Matthews is going to be able to con contest for that type of money as well but does he deserve it? I feel like that's the big question. Was this the right move for the Toronto Maple Leafs? I mean, that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. When anyone signs a deal with a team, it's the question is, was this a good idea? Well, Matthews, is he worth the $13.25 million? After coming off what some people say was a down year for him, he still got 85 points, which is by no means a bad season. The year before, 106 points, he finished getting the Hart and Ted Lindsay as as well as 60 goals the only Maple Leaf in history to do that feat at this point in his career and like what is it like the six seasons that he's played or so he is already 11th in Leafs history when it comes to points 11th he's at 400 he's 445 points away from Matt Sundin who has gotten uh, 987 he's so close and with those four years and with goal scoring going up and guys seeming like uh like Mitch Marner who's only getting better as well and just things all going up like all the like the statistics regarding offense for Matthews looks like they're only going to go up and him scoring more goals and speaking of goals he is already in his short career in the NHL is fifth in goals at this point already he's at 299 he's one goal away from breaking 300 and the record for the Maple Leafs is 420 I mean with the way that this guy score goals I mean he could easily score 60 in two seasons and boom right that 121 I guess he'd need one more extra goal but he would be tying Matt Sundin's record and then one more goal after that and he's broken it and over four seasons I mean the guy if he over four seasons, if he scores 40 goals, which is 100% likely for this guy, easily he's going to surpass that. So we will make he'll cement himself in Maple Leafs history already, if he already hasn't. And in my opinion, in my humble opinion, Austin Matthews already is the greatest Maple Leaf of all time. You can say Matt Sundin is or one of these other guys from the past, but in my eyes, there's absolutely no way that Austin Matthews is not the greatest player to ever put on the jersey of the Toronto Maple Leafs, to wear the blue and white. Austin Matthews, the Arizona native, is easily, hands down, the greatest player in this organization to ever play for this franchise. But was it a good idea? Was it? Is this worth for the Maple Leafs? Because they have done the same thing. Over and over and over again with Kyle Dubas, now that he's gone though, are they going to learn their lesson? 
that the core of of Tavares, Marner, Matthews, Nylander, or Morgan Riley, like those five guys, like this team just isn't ready to win the playoffs. They are nowhere even close. They're, I dare say that their their uh, series victory against the Tampa Bay Lightning was not just a fluke, but they got extremely lucky that they drew a team that was just f- like tires weren't just deflating we're flat and not just flat like the rubber is gone like a team in Tampa Bay that just was absolutely sucking going into the playoffs and they beat them rightfully but in a contended series and then they go to the next round against the Florida Panthers and they are whooped so for the Maple Leafs is this the right move for them to keep Matthews for another year and see if the moves with like Tyler Bertuzzi and John Klingberg and Max Domi, if these are going to be the right moves for this team to finally push them over the hurdle. Because at this point, like guys like Matthews, guys like Marner, they're not at the point like Eric Carlson, where Carlson is like, I've got, I'm 33 years old. I'm getting up there in the end of my career. Who knows how much I left I've got in the tank, especially with injuries. I got to get a cup sooner than later. I, I have to win it this season. Now, choosing the Penguins of all teams to win it doesn't make any sense. But anyways, for Matthews, for Marner, like these guys, they want the win the cup, right? Obviously, that's what every player wants. But it's not at, they're not in despair yet. They're not in desperation to hoist the cup. In four years, though, when Austin Matthews is getting into his high 20s, getting into 30s, that is when they're going to be wanting to get those big chances. And then he will be able to go to whatever team he wants with the cap only going up. And in four years, what's it projected at? Like 90-something million. And at that point, plenty of room for some teams, maybe even the Arizona Coyotes, to come back over here when guys like Logan Cooley, guys, I mean, I could go down the whole list of the entire elite prospect pool that the Coyotes have that Matthews could join one day and that could be the, just that story right there now you can make the whole joke if the Coyotes even exist by then but that's a whole other story so for the Maple Leafs was this a good idea is this the smart move for the Leafs I think so because for only four years I'm sure they would love to lock him up but I don't even think that, that would be a good idea I think giving him four years is perfect because the the team is still in much in a win now mode right they're not ready to start throwing things away especially when you have a caliber of player like austin matthews who is in top three of like goal scoring the last well three out of the last four years is top three in goal scoring as one of the best shots in the world and somehow had a a down year is still 85 in points and is still killing it right so for the, Ma- for the Maple Leafs, they can't let this guy walk yet. But I think for four years, to give this team four more years for uh, Matthews to break the record, Mitch Marner to stay around, maybe you sign him for three years and both those guys walk at the same time, right? This team is by no means c- anywhere close to trying to retool or rebuild yet. They are a much win-now team. And Brad Tree Living knows that. And that's why they got to keep Matthews. They bring in Domi. They bring in... Um, Bertuzzi for the one year and they're gonna just go at it one year at a time one of these four years maybe they'll win it maybe they really need to get a deep team and with the cap rising it'll help especially a team like the Maple Leafs who are so stuck at the cap that they need that space to sign in more guys like Bertuzzi, sign more defensemen like Klingberg, and make them a more serious contender to fill the holes f- fix the the spots on this team that they really need when they face in the playoffs that they're just not up to that level so maybe this is the year maybe with those couple of additions this is the year and the four next four years are going to look great for austin matthews right i guess we'll only have to wait and see but overall in my opinion is this a good contract i think so i mean if anyone is worth the big money that players are going to be starting to get paid i mean can you only imagine in a few years when mcdavid needs a new contract what his number is going to be i mean that'll it's going to be unheard of what amount he gets what about Connor Bedard in three years when he gets out ends his uh his uh entry level contract I can I can only imagine what those type of deals are going to look like and for Matthews he earns this it, it is high like if you look at this like as in right now yes this is 
maybe not an overpayment, but at the same time, he's the best player in your team's history. He's one of the very best players in the world. He makes this team a lot of money. People don't realize that, too. Like, sure, they're paying him $13.25 million, but how much money do you think he makes back in return? How many players, how many people is Austin Matthews their favorite player? How many, like, so, like, Toronto's the number one talked about team in the world. This is their guy. This is the moneymaker guy, right? It's not Marner. It's not Tavares. It's not Nylander. It's Austin Matthews. So that's another reason, too, is he's their moneymaker, right? He is their crown jewel. Without him, they lose profit not just on the ice, but they also lose profit on the actual business side of hockey. But that is all I got to say. So thank you for watching this. I know this isn't the best setup in the world. I've got freaking apples on the side here. And I, I know it's still a work in progress. But we're getting there. And videos will be coming out regularly soon. But for now, it'll be once in a while. But anyways, thank you for watching this. Ha too sweet. Have an amazing day. And I'm begging you, please pick up your free subscription. And until next time. Have an amazing day, and ta-ta for now. Uh...